Pilarisha. You may know me as Pilarisha, but I'm not going to talk about that today. Anyways, welcome to Beacon Academy's annual art exhibition. This year is going to be a special one since we're going to be doing it online. Get ready to see the amazing art from the Beacon Academy students we did so far. So without further ado, let us welcome Caitlin and Emily from Year 1 to show us their artworks from your joyful class. Hello, my name is Caitlin. This year we focus on illustrating houses and buildings from different continents. Do you know that people who live in extremely cold places built their houses from ice blocks? They are called igloo. I find this fact really interesting. This is the igloo collage I created using markers and oil pastels. Hi, I'm Emily. Caitlin was right. It's really interesting to learn about the houses people live in and illustrate them. I learned that bricks are considered as the strongest materials used to build houses. This is a school building illustration I did using colored pencils. Alright, let's see the other art bricks done by me and my classmates this term. Enjoy! About collage. The term collage was coined by Pablo Picasso and the Cubist painters with the emergence of modernism in the early 1900s. Wood based collage began around 1930, and decoupage is a decorative craft commenced as early as 1900. Photo montage began in 1956, and digital collages began in 1992. Now, let us welcome Gia from Year 2 to speak about what they did this term. Hello, my name is Gia from Year 2. So far, we have been focusing on conceptual art. I admit that it was a bit difficult to understand what conceptual art was at first. But then our teacher explained that conceptual artworks usually had signs and symbols hidden in them. For example, we drew this as a symbol of kindness. These hands shaking each other symbolizes kindness. Do the colors we chose here also play some part in depicting kindness? Let's see other conceptual artworks done by me and my classmates.
Well done, you two students. Many conceptual artworks are hard to interpret because they represent very deep meanings. You did well in learning the concept of conceptual artworks at a very young age. I especially love the ones depicting global warming and the pandemic. All right, next, Jana from Year 3 will share about what art they did. Over to you, Jana. Hi, my name is Jana. Visual art is the focus on learning and symmetrical designs. We were greatly inspired by traditional designs. Our teacher taught us to create templates from scrap paper to draw symmetrical designs on our sketchbooks. But first, we had to observe the details of several iconic messages, like the famous Parang Tip, Trumpet, Nitty, Chipwalk, and my favorite, Miss Men in Aruda. Let's see the designs drawn by my classmates and me. Designs year threes. Fun fact: Batik used to be exclusively done by women, as it needed precision in making intricate designs. So it was believed that women used to do it better than men. Only until the discovery of batik pattern stamping, then men started creating batik patterns too. Next, let us welcome the year fours. They created interesting paper masks, and now they will share their knowledge about it. Covering the face alone or the head and body, masks are made and worn for a variety of reasons. Mask is based on social customs, conventions, and religious observances that are common to all mankind. Persons are actually recognized most easily by their faces, and so the face can be thought to represent the whole person. Putting on a mask then is often seen as becoming another person or being replacing one face with another. Masks worn as a part of a costume of children, as on Halloween, are sometimes called a false face. When an actor or a, a tribal dancer puts on a mask, it is not as a disguise. Instead, in the eyes of those watching, the performer becomes the person or creature represented by the mask. Traditional masks may portray gods, demons, spirits of dead and of nature and animals. Masks represent characters in stage dramas and masks have used to preserve the appearance of those no longer living. The meaning of a mask, however, cannot be understood unless its use is known. Among the most common uses are producing a strong emotional response in waters such as fear in an animal. Becoming a godlike being in order to bring about some common good, such as successful crop. Disease, becoming a special group or secret society. Criticizing or making fun of powerful people or groups. Artistically, masks are among the most accomplished and fascinating objects produced by traditional cultures. The recognition of their imaginative power by such artists as Pablo Picasso and Paul Klee played a major role in the development of modern art. But it is only when masks are worn in dances and other kinds of performance that their full power can be felt. And this article about masks was taken from Britannica website. I hope you learned something from us today. Next, let us watch a short drama by our friends Nathan John, Kihana, 
Kayla, and Nathan Neal. Enjoy! A long, long time ago, there lived a widow who didn't have a child. She lived in a village near a forest. Every day she prayed to, to God for a child. Oh God, please give me a child. I feel lonely. I promise that I will always protect my child. Please answer my prayer. Thank you, God. One day, the green giant Boto Ije passed by her house. He heard what she was praying for. Oh my gosh, who are you? I am Boto Ije. What? Uh, are you kidding? No, I'm serious. Yes, I'm serious. Really serious. If you don't believe me, it doesn't matter. All right, all right. I see. So, what can you do to help me? Look, here are some cucumber seeds. Plant these seeds, then you get the dollar. Do, do you mean it? That's so easy. Yes, I mean it. But remember, on our sixth birthday, come back to eat the go. Yum, 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 yum. But, but, all right, all right. Okay, I'll take your offer. Yes. Thank you, Buto Ijo. <laughs> See you again in six years from now. And remember your promise! Okay. The widow planted the seeds. Months later, a golden cucumber grew in the yard. The cucumber was getting bigger and bigger. When it was ripe, she picked it. Whoa, what a big one. Carefully, she cut the cucumber into two. She was surprised that she found a beautiful baby girl inside the cucumber. How happy she was. I think I will name her Simon Mas because she came from the golden cucumber. Oh my gosh, she is really cute and has fair skin too. Years passed by, and Timon Mas grew into a lovely girl. Her mother was very proud of her, but her heart hurt so bad when she remembered her promise to Boto Ijo. On Timon Mas' sixth birthday, Boto Ijo came for the widow's promise. <laughs> hey, widow, where is your daughter? I have come to eat her up. Remember the promise you said to me. Be patient, Boto Ijo. Even Mas, my daughter, is playing somewhere in the fields. <laughs> I know you're lying. Never mind, I'll find her by myself. Even Mas, come here. Take this bundle. It contains chili seeds, salt, cucumber seeds, and shrimp paste. Throw each of them when the giant gets closer to you. These will help you get away from the giant. Run as fast as you can. The giant chased Timon Moss, and she was getting closer and closer. Timon Moss then took a handful of salt from the bundle. She spread out the salt. Suddenly, a wide sea appeared between them. The giant had to swim to reach her. <laughs> Do you think you can run away from me? No way. Come on, I'll get you. Oh, oh no, he is closer, right behind me. Timon Moss was still running, but now the giant almost caught her. Quickly, she took the chili seeds and threw them at the giant. The seeds suddenly grew into some trees and trapped the giant. The tree grew some thorns as sharp as a knife. The giant screamed painfully. Ouch, ouch! This girl's not nice! Do you want to play with me? Okay, what's the game? <laughs> oh no, he is still chasing me. I must run. But the giant was very strong. Again, she almost got Timon Mas. So Timon Mas took the cucumber seeds. She threw them to the ground, and suddenly they became a white cucumber seed. Hey, what's this? Cucumbers are everywhere. Mm, delicious. 
Demon Moss kept on running as fast as she could, but soon she was very tired, and things were getting worse too. The giant had woken up. Whoa. Whoa. I'm in store again. Hey, Demon Moss, you come run away from me. I'll get you. <laughs> Where are you, girl? Oh, God. He has woken up. What shall I do, God? Please help me. This is my last hope. Desperately, then she threw her last weapon, the fish paste. The paste turned into a big swamp of lava. Oh no, what is this? It's so strong smell exactly. Give me must I swear I will swallow you as soon as I catch you. <sighs> The giant fell into the swamp, but his hands almost reached the moon mass. Suddenly, the swamp pulled him to the bottom. The giant was panicking because he couldn't breathe. Finally, he drowned. Demon Mass was very relieved, and she was free, safe from now on and then on. Demon Mass lived happy with her mother. The giant turned into a fish who was very grumpy and sleepy. I am a fish now. I should call myself a joke. Thank you for listening. Wonderful Year Fours. Thank you for the interesting pieces of information about masks. How interesting that masks are believed to give power to the dancers who wear them during the performance. Masks are also a part of every culture. Okay, now let's welcome Year 5 students who will share their artworks with us. My name is Alana and um, I'll be sharing with you guys my collage about um, water pollution. The title of this collage uh, is Plastic Equals to No Air. So this is what it looks like with no pollution. But with plastic in the ocean, it, will, it makes the ocean polluted with, and fishes and plants will die. The process of this collage first painting was first painting colors onto papers and cutting it. I then put it onto this paper and combined it together. For the tree, I, I added um, cuts and pieces of green colored paper. Next is a sculpture I made about water pollution. Um, so it's supposed to be an octopus and a fish in the in a pond. But then um, when you put the the bottles in the in the lake it will die. So the process of this is to like um, sculpt the the pond. Then I made the octopus and the fish. Then I made the bottle and painted it. So this is the sculpture I made for water pollution. And when you put the um the bottles into the the pond, it will um pollute the the ocean. Uh, thank you. Hello everybody. Today I'm gonna be showing you my collage poster on water pollution. So um I decided to focus on water pollution because it really makes a negative impact to the world and I want to help stop water pollution, so that's why I made the poster. And the progress of making this was painting the paper with watercolor and then I tear it to pieces on the cardboard and I added some printouts, quotes, and the title is Save the Scales. Today I'm going to present about the for my poster, which I made about deforestation. 
and I made it by tearing pieces of magazine and putting it on the cardboard. And then for the title, I made it as animals to use for humans. And for the quote, I made it as nobody in the world needs an elephant tusk but an elephant. Thank you. Hi, today I'm gonna print. I'm going to show you about my collage base about the sun god from Princess Mononoke. So our teacher present this book from Princess Mononoke. So like there is different types of impact to the world like animal poaching, pollution, and deforestation. The one I chose is the deforestation because it, it got a bad impact to the world because people are cutting trees just to make paper. So like to make the collage, I, I do with the watercolor and I paint it in the white normal paper and then I paste it. Then I print out the sun god from from the internet, then I paste it. I also write a poem and I give the title, Being Cruel is Not Cool. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jaden. I'm making collage posters with dry leaves. First, I put leaves on A4 paper and then I glue it and then I leave it on the dry paper. I think I put some quotes about how we have to treat our environment. I am making the poster because I want to ask people together to save our earth by making a green environment. Thank you for listening. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sean and I made a poster about deforestation. Deforestation is an environmental issue when people cut and burn down trees in the forest, which can result in pollution, loss of animal habitats, and flooding. First, I painted lots of paper using different colors. Then I wrecked the pages and stuck them to my collage paper as my background. After that, I cut out some trees and stuck them to my collage background. Finally, I cut out printed animals and that I found on Google and arranged them to complete my collage. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine. And I made a collage poster about uh, animal poaching. So my, my title that I put is Animals Feel Pain Too. And I found this from Google. And then I put, I drew a swan over here with a lotus. And I also put a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. about animals. Okay. And then uh, I also uh, like made a drawing about about animal coaching, and so there are trees burning down, and I don't know if you can see. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Solomon. Today, I'll be presenting my artwork from art class. So my topic is about water pollution. I chose this topic because people are polluting water, which makes a bad impact to the world. And my title is about what my title is water to drink or pollute. I had put in a quote and how I made this was painting watercolor papers from with watercolor and ripping them to the cardboard. I also have printed out some chips that we eat daily or mostly and to show that water is getting polluted. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michaela and I chose the environmental issue animal poaching for my collage. My inspiration came from animals, my pets, and the story of Princess Mononoke that my teacher showed my class because it shows a lot of environmental issues such as water pollution, deforestation, and others. The process started when I prepared three different colors of origami and sewed them up into pieces as the background, then assembled them on a piece of A3 cardboard. After that, I assembled dried leaves and stuck them on. I added some drawings I made and some of my printouts. Lastly, I added a title for my collage, which is Love Animals Don't Wear Them, because a lot of people cut their fur and make them into clothes. And I also added some short phrases, such as have a heart and do your part. And after that, I also added, and animals are such an important role in our lives. 
animals are important to human beings because they benefit us socially, personally, and yeah. Since they are great benefit to us, we should treat them well. And I felt very excited when I made this collage. Hello, everybody. This is and this is my poster about uh, environment environmental issues. I am working on deforestation because I know that uh, trees are cut down. It's uh, and it helps us live. And my title of the poster is "Trees Help Us Live." Uh, I made a poem, and it's uh, "We see the trees, and there comes the breeze. We live with needs, and it comes from trees." And then I also made uh, the animals to show the, what it's like without deforestation. Thank you. My poster is for is deforestation. I made this poster about deforestation to stop deforestation. I made it by drawing boxes, then coloring it, then making stumps, then pasting leaves. Then I draw um, dot spirits from Princess Mononoke. My details showed it in the class. Then I wrote, we depend on the forest and the forest depends on us. The title is No Trees, No World. Thank you. Hi, my name is Daryl and here is my environment here's my environmental issue poster. It is made out of water coloring and and pasting pasting some um, pictures on. Here's what the, here's what the quote says. Only when the last of the animal when only when the last of the animals' horns, tusks, skins and bones are are sold, will mankind realize that Man, mankind can buy back the wildlife. Hi, I'm Ashwin, and I made an environmental poster on water pollution. My quote is, be a part of the solution, not part of the pollution. I made this with watercolor, and the title is, Water is the Driving Force of All Nature. Hello, everyone. Uh, my poster is about de deforestation. Uh, I used, I draw the Kodamas, and these are dead trees. My poem is about, uh, the quote is about, the trees cry out as they die, but you cannot hear them. And I use watercolor for, for the background. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alex. Today, I want to show you my collage poster about deforestation. Uh, I I made the I made the this poster about deforestation because many trees are running out on Earth, and I wrote a quote I wrote a quote by Dorothy Dorothy Stang, which is the dad of the forest is the end uh, end of our life. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stella, and this is my poster of an environmental issue, which is water pollution. I chose water pollution by our teacher showed us a comic book, um, and it called Princess Mononoke, and it showed many kinds of environmental issues, such as air pollution, animal pollution, and much more. So I chose water pollution because many people are littering and throwing trash into the sea without knowing that they are polluting the sea and they're also killing animals. I made this by watercoloring three to four pieces of paper and I teared them and stick them onto a piece of hard paper. My title of my poster is The Call of the Sea and I have this poem that says, the waves whisper to me, call me to the soft sand. The water sweeps over my feet, surrounded where I am. This is by Lonely Drill XOXO. And I also have this quote that said, Water is the driving force of all nature. This is by Leonardo da Vinci. Thank you. Hi, my name is Charlene, and this is the poster I made about animal poaching. I chose animal poaching because there's no reason to kill animals because they're also our friends. And it's connected to this quote that I made, animals are our friends, not enemies. The process is I watercolored a paper with to make the sky and ripped it and then stick it. And I did the same thing with the ground and the mountains. And I also drew the Kodama and the sun god that from the story Princess Mononoke that our teacher uh, told us. 
and thank you. Thank you, Year Fives. Your artworks help raise awareness about the ongoing environmental issues, which everybody needs to know. I love the Ghibli movie Princess Mononoke 2. It's a beautiful allegory about nature's destruction. I feel saddened by the things that people do to nature, like deforestation, animal poaching, and pollution. I hope your artworks will open people's minds about these issues and prompt them to act. All right, next, the year sixes will talk about the art analysis activities they did this term. Hello, my name is Joseph, and I'm from year six. So far in visual arts, we have learned about art analysis. We are studying two artists, Master Van Gogh and Lord Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci was my personal choice, as in the final project, we could choose our own artists and their respective artworks. The media I use for these past projects were, were mainly pencils, as they add amazing value and you can really add that nice shadow into your art piece. Our first work in term three was that Miss Laura gave us six to five couple different pictures and artworks of Van Gogh, which he did in herbs. We had to pick one of them and recreate it and analyze it. The most important part about that specific task was the techniques. We needed to understand and try to mimic Van Gogh's technique in creating grass textures, tree textures, and other textures that were very, very nice. Our second task was that we could analyze and recreate a certain artwork in Van Gogh in Earl's book. And in that book, there was hundreds of different types of artworks. But the one really caught my eye. It was this sketch of Van Gogh, which he did in the Earl Seashore. And this is actually really, really cool because it's like a combination of four ships, of four different ships. And like the quantity of this adds up and like actually makes some good quality. And I actually really, really love this, this ocean texture. And like, it's just not an eyesore. It's, 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 it's the complete opposite. It's actually really, really nice. To look at and the challenges i actually did in this um in this artwork was that i think the most challenging part was actually shaping of the ships and that like the ocean textures don't get me wrong it was hard yet it was quite simple just dots and dots laid across all, all over all over the sea our third and final project was a bit different than the others this one we got to choose any single art piece ever made, but we had to analyze it and recreate it. I chose Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. It's a painting, but I did it as a sketch because I wanted to, to add and to create the extra details onto this thing. And why I did a sketch and not the painting, in a sketch, it's much, it's much more easy to analyze and learn from Leonardo da Vinci's techniques. And so the challenges I faced when I ch when I was making this was basically I think it's the most is the facial features and the body. It was really hard because like some people like this this trio they're stacking up, and when you and when it stacks up you kind of have to make it perfectly sym symmetrical or not the other one will actually be left out. And so I say this this was a lot of my hard work and time. In, in the weekends, I spent the whole weekend basically doing this. But at the end, I think this is all worth it. In conclusion, I think I've learned a lot from this term and in art analysis. I really, really especially love analyzing the techniques of the different, different artists and trying to compare them to my own, which was quite amazing to see how art has changed from Van Gogh to Leonardo da Vinci and to Monet and to other, other artists. And in this term, I have learned many, many new things, and I wish I could continue this topic, but I also want to learn new things in art. Thank you, Ms. Laura, for teaching us. Hi, I'm Snigda from Year 6. For the past few weeks, we were learning how to analyze artworks. To begin with, we saw some videos on how to look at artworks, judge, and analyze them overall. 
Artworks can be looked at from many different perspectives, and it can take more than two minutes to understand a piece. In fact, they can be quite complex. Each artwork has a backstory and meaning behind it. We analyzed the methods and techniques of artists. Every artist has certain moods, textures, and their color schemes on, in their artworks. I mainly focused on observing the texture in the paintings as our, quick, as our first quick sketches were based off of Vincent van Gogh's art pieces. If you don't know, he's the artist behind the Starry Night painting. Anyways, my first sketch was a quick study of the landscape with the Walway farm. I only did a section of the whole drawing. It gave me a feel of his style and the simplicity in his drawings. For the next sketch, our teacher shared us a PDF titled Van Gogh and Arles. I picked this piece because it had a lot of different textures and objects, even with a simple design. You can see clearly how much texture he puts into his artworks. Even if it's a simple field, he adds so much detail. For the final project, we were allowed to pick any artist to do a study on. Some picked Picasso, a few did Vermeer, but I still continue to attempt the unique style of Van Gogh. I decided to study a painting, a pair of clogs. I chose it because it had a lot of texture and at the same time, you need to have a sense of perspective to get it right. I struggled a lot while drawing the shoes and found it hard to get the, it in the correct angle. After trying to the, draw them multiple times, I was pleased with the angle. Although I feel like I could have added more texture and made the shoes more proportional, I learned some new techniques and overall it was a great experience. A pair of clogs. I chose it because it had a lot of texture and at the same time, you need to have a sense of perspective to get it right. I struggled a lot while drawing the shoes and found it hard to get the, it in the correct angle. After trying to the, draw them multiple times, I was pleased with the angle. Although I feel like I could have added more texture and made the shoes more proportional, I learned some new techniques and overall it was a great experience. Hi, I'm Mark and I'm in year six. This term in visual arts, we learned all about art analysis. We studied artworks from famous artists such as Vincent van Gogh and tried to duplicate them using their styles and techniques. These are my van Gogh studies. This is an oil pastel study that I did. This is a pencil study that I did. And this is a pen study that I did. He uses short strokes to add value, details, and form to his drawings. For inspiration, Miss Laura provided us with a PDF book titled Van Gogh in Arles. It contained some of Van Gogh's sketches from when he was in Arles and a few of his notes. This book provided us with a lot of inspiration. For our individual project where we got to choose any artist and study any of their paintings, I chose Son of Man by René Marguerite. He's a surrealist artist and paints very colorful paintings. But I did a pencil study, but I paid very close attention to his rendering and shading. This is my study. There were a few challenges that I came across while working. The form was very tricky and the textures were very tedious to add. But overall, I'm quite satisfied with the results. I also found that sketching using basic shapes helped a lot and drawing from left to right also helped with avoiding smudging because I am right-handed. I also found that working in layers makes the artworks look better compared to working in one layer because it adds depth to the drawing. In conclusion, art analysis was fun, interesting, and just a little bit tedious. I learned about other artists' styles and techniques, and I also developed some of my own. Overall, I am very satisfied with my achievements and progress. Thank you. My name is Anaya and I'm from year 6. Today I will be showing you a few of my artist studies that I have done recently. In this third term, our focus leaned towards analyzing the techniques of artworks and artist styles. The mediums we utilized were graphite pencils and oil pastels. 
The artist style that I was heavily inspired by was Vincent van Gogh. Our teacher shared a PDF book of Van Gogh in Arles, and I was most interested in his particular piece called Street in St. Marie de la Mer, which was an artwork he made in 1888. In addition to that, we did a summative project in which we could pick any artist's work who stood out to us the most, and I chose Johannes Vermeer's prominent painting of The Girl with the Pearl Earring. The most challenging part to draw were the eyes as they had so much detail in them. Overall, I found Vermeer's style really difficult, but I enjoyed drawing the portrait. In the process of drawing this, while I was erasing a part close to the nose, some oil pastel on the eraser smudged onto the book because the eraser wasn't clean. I was really, really devastated and I didn't want to continue the drawing. The more devastating part is when I tried to erase the stain off the book, it wasn't coming off. I really wanted to give up at this point, so I consulted my teacher. My teacher gave some advice on what to do and some suggestions on how to clean it, but I wasn't willing to risk getting it more damaged, so I just stuck to how it was. To be honest, once I started shading over it and continuing it, it wasn't really that visible anymore. Overall, I preferred the Van Gogh study as his style of sketching and coloring is just more relaxing and less stressful than Vermeer's. I think I did a better job at Van Gogh's style of shading with short strokes, but I can't judge because both of their styles are completely different. I discovered that Vermeer blended everything smoothly in contrast to Van Gogh, and Van Gogh used more lively and vibrant colors unlike Vermeer. In this term, I was able to observe different artist styles, and I also got to learn how to blend using short strokes applying Van Gogh's style. I feel quite satisfied with the results of my artworks, and I also noticed that I improved my shading skills and my form got exceedingly proportional. However, I could work on adding more texture to my sketches. My teacher also mentioned that I added my own uniqueness to the Van Gogh studies, which I'm really happy about. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching our art assembly. I hope you enjoyed it. We will see you next year with more and better artworks to show. Now, as Van Gogh said, go out and paint the stars.